So how can GBA help me come up with a good research question? The first thing is to ask yourself, are uncritical assumptions about sex or gender actually influencing my research question? Okay, let's try this out. Say I'm interested in how being in daycare affects really young children. You see so many parents dropping their babies off to be cared for all day by others that you really wonder what effects that might have. Right, so how might you first phrase your interest as a testable question? How about, do children who are put in daycare from an early age have more emotional problems than children who are raised at home by a primary caregiver? That's a good start. I noticed that you haven't made the assumption that the primary caregiver is necessarily female, but can you think of any other gendered assumptions that might be lurking in there? I guess I'm assuming a couple of things just by the way I phrased the question. The question assumes daycare is worse for children than being raised at home, and that full-time daycare versus full-time home care by a primary caregiver are the only important things to compare. And even though you aren't assuming that the primary caregiver is a woman, many people likely will assume that. And by dropping her kids off at daycare, she might be causing them emotional problems. Mothers, and especially working mothers, have been criticized a lot over the years. So are you saying we can't even ask that question? It seems like it might be kind of interesting. Remember that GBA is not about ruling out whole categories of research questions. It is about being sensitive to how gender assumptions and stereotypes shape the questions we do ask. How we formulate questions really influences the kinds of answers we can get. In these examples, we might consider rethinking the question so it is less evaluative from the get-go. This might actually open up more possibilities and make for a more interesting study. So how about this? How do different child rearing environments affect children's emotional development? Great! You can see how this research question might help you think about caregiving in a number of different kinds of environments, rather than just full-time daycare or care at home. Or examining how changing gender norms around responsibility for childcare have impacted children and families. Or looking at the well-being of children where daycare is subsidized versus where it's not. When you apply GPA to research questions, it can even open up different research designs and methods. Okay, so what else do we need to consider? Another important issue is, how might sex and gender norms limit or constrain the research questions posed in the field overall? So for example, in developmental psychology, we continue to ask a lot of questions about motherhood, but fatherhood has been relatively less well studied. And even more rare is research that explores fathering at the intersections of race, ethnicity, and class. So for example, how do African American men experience fatherhood? Or what is the experience of fatherhood for men at different socioeconomic levels? How about parenting in same-sex couples? How about non-binary or trans parenting? Gender stereotypes might also influence how researchers frame questions, so that they end up reinforcing the same stereotypes. I recently read a study that asked, are women who dress in sexy versus business-like attire perceived as less competent when employed in high-status versus low-status jobs? The researchers found that sexily dressed female managers were perceived as less competent by both women and men than sexily dressed female receptionists. By only posing this question about women and not asking participants to evaluate male managers or receptionists, the researchers have both drawn on and reinforced gender stereotypes. But didn't they point that out? That this was a stereotype and we should stop making assumptions about women based on how they're dressed? That would have been nice, but instead they used the results of their study to remind women to be careful about their clothing choices. They actually wrote that if women want respect in a high status career, they should resist the siren call to dress provocatively. This sense of casting women's clothing choices and women as the problem, rather than the gender stereotypes that lead to biased and unjustified perceptions. Okay, I think we're getting the hang of this. Let's consider one more issue. Sometimes, gender norms and assumptions lead to research questions that exclude or ignore potentially relevant groups of research participants. There are some classic examples of this in health research, such as when men have not been included in research on osteoporosis, 
or women have not been included in research on heart disease because it was considered to be a man's disease. Non-binary, trans, and intersex folks are still rarely included in psychological research, except if issues experienced by these groups are the focus of the study. Here is an example in psychology. A prominent gender stereotype is that men are more aggressive than women. For a long time, studies of aggression, especially bullying or domestic violence, tended to focus on men's behaviors. However, when women began to be included in these studies, it was found that they expressed similar levels of aggression, but their aggressive acts are qualitatively different. If we only ever studied aggression in men, we would not know as much as we need to about these important topics. One of the trickiest things about GBA in psychology is that our research questions always come from somewhere. In fact, they often come from our experiences in the real world. A world that is full of stereotypes about gender, race ethnicity, class, and so many other social categories. If we don't want our research to uncritically draw on and reinforce these stereotypes, we need to be mindful about how we formulate our questions. In turn, our own social locations, such as our gender, sexual orientation, race, culture, affect how we experience the world, and thus how we frame our questions. Remember, nobody comes up with research questions in a bubble. Thanks for checking out our video. Click the link below to explore the rest of the videos in this series. Also take a look at Psychology's Feminist Voices website for more resources about feminism, gender, intersectionality, and psychology. Remember, gender, gender matters! matters.